guys, I'm Don Cottom with 323Link, and um, we're an encoder manufacturer. We manufacture a product called Educast. And so Educast is built on Linux. It's really a stripped-down version of Ubuntu. Um, and so we've done the same thing as many manufacturers, or uh, not many, a few, where we've complied with standards. Um, kind of our core, our customer base is really built off of people that don't have a, really a lot of community colleges, things like this. Um, and so we built the product where it was a very simple plug-and-play type integration, and it didn't need or require a lot of maintenance and support. And that's really kind of the core concepts of how we developed our product. We have our own hosted platform. We integrate with other platforms like Kaltura and even some other platforms I can't actually mention today because we're under non-exposure. But basically, uh, we have several other platforms we can del deliver to, and we focused on the encoder and trying to make the best possible encoder. So today, and it's kind of interesting, some of the topics that have come up are actually the same things we've done or been doing for a while. And I'm going to talk a little bit about Boise State University, where we have a 40-unit deployment today. And so <clears throat> in their case, they actually produce somewhere in the proximity of 150 to 250 hours of content per week. Um, so that definitely uh, uncovered some problems that we'll get into in a minute. Now we have several methods of how you can trigger a recording, okay? The one that most of our customers know of is using a simple USB key or thumb drive. One thing we found at Boise is that when we surveyed faculty and adjunct faculty, we found that most of the faculty did not want to be recorded on a scheduled basis. They didn't want to walk in on Monday every Monday and be recorded, recorded from 9 to 10. They didn't want to be exposed to camera all the time. And so by using a simple USB key or thumb drive, we give them control. They can record five minutes that day, nothing that day, or they can record five five-minute segments. It's completely up to them, okay? The other thing this does is it kind of allows them to self-edit their video. They can record the core concepts and just record those components. The last thing I'll say is, <clears throat> is we've also found that that argument that faculty typically have about intellectual property being captured, we get rid of that. Just unplug the key. Okay? Now, obviously, Matterhorn, the scheduling system, can trigger recordings as well, uh, which at Boise we're fully you know, running in the regular Matterhorn uh, style of delivery. Um, but we also have a web interface that allows you to start the recordings. Now, this actually, the first time we did this was for the University of Tennessee for their School of Law. And so what they wanted us to do, our system records a composite view. I call it Hollywood Squares, but it's basically where you record multiple sources, we scale those, put them on a single canvas, and then output that as a single video source. So <clears throat> that's how we traditionally did it, because we wanted the, uh, we wanted the experience on mobile devices to be the same as the experience on the desktop. Plus, we stream, so we wanted to be able to stream multiple sources at one time. Well, in this development, they wanted a full stream, live stream, and recording of each individual input, including the PC, and oh yeah, they wanted it all at 30 frames per second, okay? So we did that, and we charged them actually quite a bit of money at the time, but ultimately we found out through some software trickery, that we could do this with our regular encoder. So this is what we do today. We produce a live stream of all five feeds, including the component feed, and we record all of those feeds. And obviously those can be ingested by Matterhorn. <clears throat> so we've got several different um, product offerings, depending on how many input sources you need and what variations they are. The unit that we sell the most of today, though, is this guy, our little 2RU uh, device. Um, and typically, it's our PSX system. Now, as of about four months ago, we started having our own cards manufactured. And so our newest cards that people are most interested in, and the ones we're starting to ship quite a bit of, are our four HDMI and four SDI input cards. And so as you can imagine, <clears throat> this gives us the ability to pull in all four HD sources, full frame rate, by the way, capture those in a composite view, stream those, and also capture each individual channel. 
So what this will mean for Matterhorn for us is having some other combinations of the video player, where I can take in two cameras, document camera, PC source. Just capture them all. <laughs> now we've got a new uh, single RU unit that's shipping now. And so now I have a single RU device that has four HDMI inputs or four SDI inputs. And depending on how you scale this, it can be obviously, well, in Matterhorn type projects, this can be very aggressively priced. Another thing we found <clears throat> is we did want to have uh, hot swappable drives on this device. In that case, if we do have a hard drive failure, which does happen, these are PCs, we can just simply ship another drive, swap it out, units back up. Now, another interesting thing, thing that's been brought up is the spanning across multiple cameras. We've been doing that for quite some time. Okay? We call it telepresence capture because it's very similar to telepresence video conferencing. And what we do is we take two or three camera images and we simply put them all together as one panoramic. Then we take the content source and put it below. And in some cases we've seen where people actually want to have, they have dual projection systems and they want to have two PCs captured plus two HD images, cameras. And so what this allows you to do <clears throat> is we no longer have to worry about PTZ cameras. You just capture a panoramic at the whole front of the room. It's very natural, uh, and it works, works very well. Oh, another thing we do see customers put, as we were talking about whiteboards, we do see customers put a preset in the scenario where these cameras, the HD cameras, actually zoom right into whiteboard positions. And you can do up to four cameras that way. Another thing that we're working on right now is collaborative technologies, which means like bring your own device in integration with some video conferencing platforms, which I won't get into today. <clears throat> as far as live streaming, we can stream the composite view so we can stream multiple sources at full HD resolution. Now, as far as Boise goes, I'm gonna go through this very quickly. We've seen the exact same statistics you have here. I think we're a little better we're at 96% success. We know that 2% of our problems are actually audiovisual driven. So we've got about a 2% delta there. And we've actually, this week, we've had no failures. <clears throat> now, as far as uh, what these things were, these are things we fixed at this time. Now, a <clears throat> couple things. Our new Encoder 3 will have what we call padding, but it's basically soft scaling and probing so that we'll no longer have AV issues. So those come off the table. Um, another thing that we learned in that particular situation is you really have to analyze the audiovisual design or you are doomed for, you know, there's gonna be disastrous, possibly, depending on what equipment they've selected for switching, video routing, things like that. We also realized we had to have a agent management system. So we actually built a full capture agent management system that executes all types of things. Everything from stress tests to all your units, updates, kernel updates, uh, everything can be executed and you can write custom curl um, to execute your own commands. So uh, very easy system, but man, it saves so much time. <coughs> Lastly, 3.0 will be released at Infocom. Uh, the 3.0 version has all the time preview. It has Chroma, so I can you know, do things like put backgrounds, uh, kind of like a green screen effect. I can remove the instructor from the image. <clears throat> but we really focused on audio and getting audio quality extremely good, uh, where we have noise cancelers. It's like having an audio processor built into the encoder. And then lastly, we'll be publishing to, to places like YouTube and public destinations. All right, thank you. <clears throat>